33-year-old Aussie John Piers added to his impressive career resume over the weekend, winning one of the most sought-after trophies in tennis. It is my absolute pleasure and honour to present this trophy to John and Philip, our champions for the 2021 BNP Paribas Open Men's Doubles. I would like to thank to my partner uh, who helped me once again to, to just uh, get through the match. Thanks Johnny for uh, being the unbelievable mate and uh, I'm really happy and really enjoying to play with you. The voice of Slovakia is Filip Palasic uh, teaming up with our very own John Piers to win Indian Wells for the very first time. Now this pairing playing in just their sixth tournament together, what a run it's been since the US Open where they made the semis they backed it up at the ATP 250 in San Diego, made the final there, and now winning Indian Wells. It's not a bad resume for John Pierce, who's going to kick us off tonight. A fourth ATP Masters 1000 title, a 25th career title overall. He's a Grand Slam champion, of course, at the Australian Open back in 2017. He's a two-time winner, two-time back-to-back winner of the ATP Tour Finals, a career high ranking of two in the world. It's a damn good record that kicks off our show this week. And I did manage to grab a chat with John in the desert yesterday post his great win with Philip Palaszczuk. Yeah, it's always a great one to get. I mean, we always love coming back to the desert and uh, it's always always a really strong and tough draw. And to be able to say now I've won it is something really special. You guys have been developing fantastically right throughout the US swing leading into the US Open. Great run there. I mean, this has been a very different year for you in a lot of ways. I mean, you've been so used to having a regular doubles partner all year round. Obviously, the COVID period's been tough on the logistics of tennis over the last 18 months. And then this year, you had a a number of different partners. You and Philippe came together. And really, you've just got better and better each tournament you played. Yeah, no, it's been... Yeah, certainly a year that I haven't been used to. I've been lucky enough to have consistent partners for a very long period of time. And this year was a couple of curveballs thrown at me. But at the end of the day, we've Philip and I have just been continually working on what we need to do as a team and what way we need to go about things. And I think the more time we're spending with each other has been a really good thing. And I think now the results are starting to come, which is good. And we've got a lot of trust and confidence in what we can bring it on any given day. And it's nice to be able to see the results coming so quickly. How does this partnership sort of compare? I mean, you're, you're also at a different stage of your career than when you were with uh, Henry and you know Jamie and going back, you know, to when you had your early double success. And here you've got two guys who came together this year who have both got a lot of experience on tour with other partners and then trying to make that work. I mean, just the, the differences of this partnership compared to the, the others that you've had. Yeah, no, it's in essence different but also you still got to give it a chance for the team to bond and gel together it's never easy to win straight off the bat and get strong results i mean you can get lucky and do it obviously but at the end of the day majority don't have or don't see the really strong successes straight away in their first event they play so developing a partnership takes time whether you like it or not and for us to be able to do it pretty quickly the way we've done it is a fantastic achievement for both of us but also exciting looking forward I remember being at the Australian Open when Blaschek broke through and, you know, he was he was pretty emotional that day because he'd been away from his family for some time. He had never won a major. What sort of guy is he compared to your other partners? I mean, you obviously need that great synergy on court, but you also need to have a bond off court of sorts, even though you're, you're separate, you're individual, you're travelling, but you need to have that that great chemistry. How does, how does he compare? I mean, he seems like just a ripping fella. Yeah, no, 100%. Each, he's a great guy and uh, each person's individual and he uh, he takes it in his stride, loves the big moments and it's been great to be able to partner with him and just sort of, sort of both gel so well. He's at a very similar stage of his life with two young girls like myself so there's so many similarities in terms of what we're going through what what we've been through so it's really good to be able to be relatable and also just sort of enjoy the process and enjoy the time together I mean we both brought our families here to Indian Wells and San Diego so to be able to actually do that was a fantastic for both of us and upwards going forward fingers crossed and uh, keep developing what we've started and just your thoughts on on the final today up against 
you know, two guys who have obviously predominantly played singles and do well, but have all, they've also both played a fair bit of doubles across the journey, but don't specialise in it like you guys uh, do. How did, how did you see the final? These guys are really, really good ball strikers and hit it clean. And I mean, at the end of the day, when they get hot through any period of time, it's tough to stop them. So for us to be able to get through and win in straight and have a couple of hiccups, but also stay at it was really, I think, a testament to the way we just were resilient today and just sort of stayed at it and stick to what we did. I mean, at the end of the day, we did well to break great start got three love up really quickly and then continue to hold through that set which was fantastic and then got up pretty early the start of the second which was good and kept momentum going our way but then they lit it up on returns and that's what can happen when you give these guys a half chance and they took it and for us to be able to stay tough and then win in two straight sets was fantastic and i think it showed how good a team bond we've got going right now i mean john when you got to world number two and you won the two of finals and, and then we've seen since that period there's been so many good doubles teams emerge. I mean, the competition has been really, really uh, deep and we've seen a number of pairings sort of rotate up in the, the top echelon in terms of the rankings. It, it's a good doubles crew out there, isn't it? On tour, week to week, we know you, know, you beat Mekic and Pavic, who have had an unbelievable year together, teaming up for the first time. You took their scalp at Indian Wells. How does this sort of era of men's doubles tennis compare to your you know long time in the game? Yeah, no, I think we're at a stage where there's so many teams that are so close to each other and at the end of the day, it's coming down to a few points here and there. I mean, Mek Pavic has been the standout team this year with so many titles. They won, I think it was eight they've won this year. So to be able to beat them this year was fantastic and be able to take the Masters here at Indian Wells was great. But I think at the end of the day, it just shows how deep the level of, of tennis is. I mean, you look at the draw here at Indian Wells, was was nails all the way through. There wasn't an easy easy match at all. I mean, you look through the draw, you got the top singles guys, top doubles guys playing. It's what you want to see and it's exciting going forward. And I think it also creates opportunities if you can try and get on the right side of it and start getting on a little bit of a streak and stay stay resilient and stay composed through these moments you can actually sort of hopefully be on the right side of a good period of time and i know you made comment in the presentation today about the indian wells crowd you know sticking around saturday night that had a big day of tennis a couple of men's semis the women's final a doubles final earlier in the day and great for you guys to have that sort of crowd that atmosphere and it, we, we we continue to discuss you know, on this show from time to time about doubles and where it should be played and everyone who knows their tennis appreciates how good you guys are and it's an ongoing debate isn't it about where doubles should be placed but certainly at a tournament like Indian Wells uh, they, they know their tennis and really appreciated what you guys delivered. Yeah no it's fantastic we always get great crowds here at Indian Wells I mean I think this year was slightly down just due to the change of timing of the year where they normally have it but I mean every year we come to Indian Wells doesn't matter what court you play on it's it's packed. I mean, you even get the stadium courts where you got a, can be actually a full house as well and more so than singles as well here. But no, it's great going forward and I think the more times we can get exposure playing the top singles guys is always good for doubles guys. And the more times we can build off that and continue to grow the game, it's good for everyone. I mean, majority of people back home clubs and together they play doubles more often than not so I think the more times that the exposure can get out there it's great and it's, it's always great to be able to play in front of a good crowd well said you've been away for obviously a little while I mean the Aussies we've been speaking to a number of the Aussies the last few weeks and some have decided to come home others are staying on the road and then trying to work out how they're going to get home how, how are you placed obviously you've got your family with you and there's a bit still to play out of this season before you think about getting back down under yeah no exactly I mean I was lucky enough to be able to get this family out and so I saw them in London as soon as US Open was done and they've come to San Diego Indian Wells for me now and we'll head back to London after here and I'll come in and out of London to be able to spend more time with them which is really lucky for me I know a lot so many people back home are struggling and doing it tough so to be able to get the family back together was amazing and it's something that I was really lucky to be in, to be able to do getting home yeah we'll see what the next few weeks unfold with uh, hopefully more restrictions like what New South Wales have started to introduce which is fantastic to see Australia looking to open up and we can get more vaxxed and going forward I mean we've got to start to look forward I think post-COVID rather than just stuck in just trying to get through it and I think the more times we can get any large sporting events going forward it's a great thing I mean we saw how big the AFL was in WA it was the first time out of Melbourne for so long hopefully we can get Aussie Open going and it just gives us sort of everyone a step forward we've got the ashes for the summer and then hopefully build into the Grand Prix and I, I hope that'll put Australia back on the map going forward and everyone happy more about things rather than the way we are at the moment. 
Yeah, look, there's some good signs certainly here with the vaccination rates at the moment. We receive some good news from our esteemed Premier Johnny today, <laughs> Daniel Andrews. <laughs> good week, to hear. Yeah, Victoria in a week's time is going to be in a much better nick. So people have just got to keep going to get vaccinated. Just one final one, just on that. I mean, there's a lot of discussion, certainly with how it's going to look here in Melbourne and if there's going to be lead ups outside of Melbourne with, you know, one dose, two dose, those getting vaccinated. What's your understanding, just the bigger picture of the tour of how many are vaccinated? Because obviously, the tours would be pretty keen to up the ante on that. Yeah, no, I'm not sure what the exact figure is, but I think the tour is going the right direction. I think we're above, I think if you look across singles and doubles, I think it's actually closer to 70% already. So I think the more times we can get everyone on board, the better it is for the game. And at the end of the day, it's out of my control and a lot of people's control whether people get vaccinated or not and it's their decisions. But I think the more times we can just get things going forward and whatever it takes, at the end of the day, we've got to do it.